Each Sunday this month, Pastor Tim and I will be sharing about moments of Black history in honor of Black History Month. And we're going to be sharing about figures in Church of the Brethren history that you've probably not heard much about, and we need to educate ourselves about our history. And today we're learning about Samuel Weir. Samuel Weir was born a slave in Virginia in 1812. When he was 12 years old, he was sold to another family, the McClure's. 18 years later, the McClure's young son was thrown from a horse and killed. This traumatic event led the family to faith. The McClure's felt called to apply for membership into the Brethren Church. However, the Brethren did not allow their members to own slaves, which was incredible because at the same time, other denominations were using the gospel to justify slavery. The McClure's accepted the term of membership and set Samuel free. Samuel and the McClure's were both baptized. The way that the Brethren greeted members was to extend the right hand of fellowship and to share in a holy kiss. However, the Brethren wrestled with how to greet their new black member and decided to only extend the hand of fellowship and not the holy kiss. Samuel continued to live and work with the McClure's until an opportunity arose for him to go to Ohio. At that time in Virginia, freed men and women could be rounded up and re-enslaved, and Samuel was at risk of that. He journeyed to Ohio with a brother and minister, and he was received into the Paint Creek Church in East Southeast Ohio, where members helped him to find employment and housing. He lived and worked with the Bryant family, and Brother Bryant spoke of Samuel. I regard Sammy as an example to me in many things, but especially so in that of religion. Samuel was forbidden from learning how to read and write as a slave, so Bryant's granddaughter, Katie, helped him learn how to read. Samuel shared about his later education. I stopped going to school too soon, for when I found that I could read the Bible, I felt satisfied, and I gave up all other books but that. The Bible has been my delight, and I have read it several times. Samuel also received teaching from a black tutor who was a Baptist minister. Samuel was the only black brethren in the area. While the brethren opposed slavery and affirmed the baptism of black people, worship segregation was something that Samuel faced. He was encouraged to worship with his own race, and so it was alongside his black Baptist teacher that he was nudged to try preaching, something that absolutely terrified Samuel. He remembers the first time he spoke. I told him I would try, but when the day came, I felt so very weak that I thought I could not and did not get up. I did not feel well over it, and I then thought I would never do so anymore. While Samuel had a worrisome start to preaching, he continued to preach for different denominations for five years until he was invited back to the Brethren to preach in order for them to encourage him in his call. He preached to a whole crowd of white Brethren for 39 minutes, and at the end of the meeting, they affirmed his call to ministry. He was instructed to go to his own race and hold meetings wherever opportunity afforded. White folks in his village said that, there was no one better acquainted with the reading and sense of scripture than Samuel. And if any questions or disputes arose among his neighbors as to a Bible subject, he was their reference and his decisions satisfactory. As we reflect on Samuel's story, what does it mean to you that the brethren were opposed to slavery, but struggled to accept Samuel as a full-fledged member and encouraged his ministry to his own race? What might our region and our churches look like if brethren had been able to model full inclusion so early?